as well. Telcom Kenya is in advanced talks with partners to offer customers in remote areas 4G enabled smartphones in efforts to enhance connectivity, tap internet offered by Google Loons, and grow the Telco subscriber base. Telcom Kenya CEO Mova Kibati says after the successful launch of the Internet Loon project, the next phase for the company is to ensure that those living in remote areas are powered to utilize the service. He spoke to our reporter, Alan Aoko. During these times of the COVID-19 pandemic, technology has helped businesses in continuity and of course even individuals in running their own affairs. And if you will, it is the few to whom we owe so much. And also just to delve into now the exciting world of the telecoms industry, the technology in that space, we are joined with the executive director and CEO of Telcom Kenya, Mr. Mugo Kibati, who will give us more insights into the exciting world of the technologies that are moving the telecoms industry forward. Welcome very much. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you. Uh, so let's just uh, dive straight in. What is Loon and why Kenya? Why, why, why Loon? Why Loon and Kenya at this time? Why did Loon choose Kenya as the first place for commercialization of this project? Well, Loon is, Loon is an alphabet company, a sister to famous Google, uh, and Google is very well known. So Loon is a sister company to Google. Both of them are subsidiaries of the alphabet company. And uh, Loon has been looking at this technology for quite a while now. But up to this point in time, uh, this Loon-based technology, uh, this, this Loon technology, which is balloon-based, basically these are aerial base stations. Therefore, the balloons that we have floating some 20 kilometers, 6,000 foot uh, up in space, you know, you should think of it as double the height that your typical airplane flies. Those are aerial base stations, right? And they are very unique technology developed by Loon, and up to this point in time has only been used or deployed in disaster recovery uh, situations. Now, this is the first time it has been deployed in a commercial setting. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, as we talk about this exciting new technology, how is Telcom Kenya really, uh, what is the role of Telcom Kenya in this uh, technology? Well, this, this is a very exciting partnership between ourselves and Loon. So, so Loon's um, uh, role is to provide the aerial base stations, right? We provide the 4G signal. So remember that um, our, you know, we, we have earth stations, or rather la la land, uh, terrestrial stations, land stations. We transmit our 4G LTE signal from these land stations to the uh, balloons, to the aerial base stations, and then they transmit across each other and eventually go back uh, to your mobile device. So the signal comes from Telcom Kenya, and I think it's important also for me to clarify, very important, that what we are transmitting is essentially um, a 4G data signal. Right? So we don't really have your, 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 your typical 2G, 3G voice signal, it's a 4G data signal. But as you know, um, as, as technology develops in this day and age, a lot of people make data calls, you know, your WhatsApp call, your WhatsApp video call, you can make that on a loon, uh, on a loon based signal. But essentially, this is a data signal. We did see uh, a few uh, days ago, uh, the Cabinet Secretary for ICT, uh, Joe Musheru, testing out the 4G prowess of the technology in Baringo. Um, we are wondering, um, is the technology ready for the rural area? What is the preparation in terms of uh, making sure that even those in the rural areas are able to enjoy this technology? So Alan, we specifically chose to go to Radat in Baringo in, to answer your question, because there was no point testing it in Nairobi. We could have done a test in Nairobi or in some other urban center, because the, the balloons you know, they, they crisscross our airspace. So they're not stationary, you know. So that is why we're going to have uh, a critical mass of balloons over our airspace moving constantly, and one balloon moves on, a new one replaces it. And the signal seamlessly takes, uh, the, the new aerial base station takes over the signal from the prior um, aerial base station. So we felt very strongly we needed to go and test this um, particular service in an area that doesn't have terrestrial uh, base station service so that we could actually certify uh, the quality, uh, the viability of the signal. And that's what the cabinet secretary was doing in the conversation he was having with the president, with the, and the president was able to talk to the people of Radat via a video call. 
um, new experiences. With these new technologies, we were able to give the citizens of Baghdad an experience they've never had before. Being able to have a one-to-many video um, uh, voice call where they were engaging the president and he was engaging them back um, in the, one of the most remote parts of the country. This is clearly a game changer. Um, perhaps maybe that viewer who is still not uh, understanding maybe the jargon and the technical specifications of the loon, uh, what, what kind of advantage uh, is this person going to get if they're hooked up to the loon vis-a-vis -vis the traditional uh, technologies of getting data? Look I, think, look, I think it's important to understand. If you're already in an area that has got terrestrial coverage, then there's no benefit uh, to the loon service. This service is geared towards areas that are underserved, where people don't have the benefit of terrestrial base stations. But the only way they can receive a data signal, a 4G data signal, is via the loon service, right? So, and again, so these are sparsely populated areas, remote areas, um, difficult terrain areas, where across the country people live uh, in all these places. So what this then helps us achieve is universal coverage right, and allows us to get people who are on the wrong side of the digital divide, meaning they're on the side that doesn't have access to data, to internet. We are now able to connect them to the internet. They're able to connect with you on email, on the web, um, on WhatsApp, on Facebook. They're able to make Facebook calls, uh, WhatsApp calls, FaceTime calls, you name it, because they now have access to data. But if you're already somebody who's in Nairobi, you have a 4G uh, device, there are plenty of terrestrial base stations which will give you very strong, you know, much better signal than you get from Loon. So really it's about getting people in who are outside the digital, the digital divide. And in that point as well, uh, since you speak about the rural areas, the, 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 the places with tough terrain, uh, of course the users will, will need uh, devices that are compatible. Are we seeing uh, Telcom Kenya go inside the woods there and uh, provide some devices for these people? We're deep in the woods. In the, in the woods and down in the shrubs because we understand that the, the, one of the biggest challenges will be device, especially smartphones, right? And so we are right now in conversations um, to be able to see if we can secure um, inexpensive, or should I say less expensive devices, uh, smart smartphones, which can be able to um, receive a, a 4G uh, signal. And in the next few weeks, um, say by the end uh, by the end of next month or early September, we shall be able to have devices in that we shall be able to uh, distribute for lower prices than you typically find in the market today. So I'm very curious. Am I able to maybe track a balloon on my phone and maybe if I see my network is bad, I run and go to a well, hill? Well, well, you will not be able to tell which balloon is giving you a signal because you can't tell if it's a terrestrial uh, signal or um, aerial base station unless you're in an area where clearly there are no terrestrial base stations. But even then, you, it will be difficult to identify which particular balloon. But your, flight, your, your, your average flight tracking uh, app on your phone can be able to help you view the balloons. Let's now, um, perhaps now, ease in and shift gears a little bit into the landscape at this time of COVID-19, especially for the company Telecom Kenya. How is Telecom Kenya, you know, um, navigating the headwinds of these challenges? Look, Alan, I think much like everybody else, whether they be corporate entities such as Telcom or as individuals, as Mugo, as Alan, uh, we've all been hit by a pandemic that um, really came as a shocker uh, to all of us and shocked our systems as individuals, as corporates, as economies, and globally. And I think that what you're seeing across the world pertains to Kenya as well. So as Telecom Kenya, as soon as uh, this pandemic hit our shores, we took measures early on. Even before the national guidelines came into place, we took certain measures to say, you know, cessation of travel, uh, business travel. For now, we've said to ourselves, uh, no need for any business travel, even within country, unless, of course, it's for technical reasons. I mean, we have engineers... Uh, who have to take care of our fiber and our base stations across the country, and they have to move around with people who man our shops, right? But for them, we have ensured personal protective equipment is supplied in adequate uh, quantities and safely so. 
uh, for our shop uh, uh, managers as well, as well as make sure that in those shops and those the est uh, establishments that are telecom, we have isolation centers. We have guidelines that we published a long time ago, all over our various offices and establishments, which talk about social distancing, using of facial coverage, like masks, how you use them. Uh, and especially at this point in time when you know, the president announced a few, a couple of days, a few weeks ago that uh, parts of the economy are going to be opened up. Now the numbers are beginning to rise. And so I keep cautioning staff that we must be ever more careful now than even it was a month or two months ago because, you know, the infection rate is much higher. And I think I'd like to commend our viewers to actually adhere to the social distancing guidelines as we are doing right now. So we've had to deal with the same issues and in the same way that everybody else is doing it. We started a telecommuting pro uh, program in March. So most of our staff and employees are working from home. And we had to equip them appropriately, uh, virtual private network devices so for, for them to be able to work from home. We are fully cognizant of the challenges of that. We all live in different types of uh, environments with different signal levels, different power. Uh, distribution. We've got kids at home now um, who are not in school, and that is an extra burden on our staff and employees because their primary duty and responsibility over and above being a telecom employee is to be a father uh, or a mother. And so we make sure that we allow them to be able uh, to be good mothers and fathers, especially now, because there are fewer people who are helping parents take care of their kids. They're normal school teachers. In some cases, they're no nannies, and they still have to do a job at the same time. So we've had to completely review the way we go about doing our business. Um, we have regular check-ins. Uh, I have three week three times weekly check-ins with my direct reports and I ask about their people and their families. And uh, so far, um, we've been uh, blessed not to have any cases within the telecom uh, workforce, but who knows? Um, with the way things are going, it's likely to happen. Um, so we are ready uh, for when that happens. Uh, more and more we are seeing people close to us, loved ones, you know, testing uh, positive. So I keep saying to my employees and to my colleagues at Telcom, we can never be too careful. And I think it's important that we adhere to the social distancing guidelines. You've, you've touched on consumer behavior and, of course, uh, uh, consumer relief uh, for your customers. Maybe expound a little more on the, the consumer behavior on how vis-a-vis uh, -vis before COVID and now during COVID times, how uh, subscribers are behaving using, uh, you know, your products and are they, are they latching in more and, and how are they doing it and for how long? How is that consumer behavior doing? So we've had, we've had a lot of clients and customers coming to us They've moved away from their offices to their homes and asking us to sort of give them relief. And we've done that with our customers. We've given them relief. Uh, we've also, as a corporate, decided to do a bit in terms of helping uh, society. So as we speak right now, we are offering free services, free Wi-Fi services to the National Coronavirus Healthcare you know, facility at uh, Bagathi. We are also doing the same at the Ministry of Health, where the, the task force chaired by the cabinet secretary is, is housed, free Wi-Fi services. Um, we've also adapted to what our clients and customers need. So we have the Somana Elimu, um, Somana Telcom, uh, Elimu Bandu. We have, we, have, uh, we have Afia Record, which is sort of um, a, 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 an initiative that allows um, uh, healthcare records across counties to be collected into a dip, in, into an electronic database, sorted out, which allows for easy electronic manipulation of those records and therefore quick response to different ailments as they happen across the counties. We've also initiated dial a doctor that allows you to call a doctor right from your own home and get you know a doctor being able to um, consult with you while you're in the confines of your home and you only would need to leave that home if the doctors are adjudged that that was required, then that service also has an ambulance service uh, coming with it. So we've had to do quite a number of things, uh, both for our key stakeholders, employees, customers, suppliers, um, for the country at large. Finally, uh, perhaps you can speak to our viewers and tell them what kind of new innovations are we going to see from Telecom Kenya? Because, of course, technology is exciting and it's what has been keeping people going through this time. What kind of innovations should we look forward to? Obviously, uh, case in point, Exhibit A is uh, what we've just been discussing, the aerial base stations. For the first time, we are the first telco in the world 
to deploy aerial base stations in a commercial setting, and we're very proud of that. And that is just uh, the beginning of more cutting edge um, initiatives that you will come to see. Uh, some which we are formulating as we speak to adapt to the COVID um, scenario, some to address what has been a dearth of connectivity for people across the country for many years, which I think we want to work towards um, eradicating. So you will find us in the, uh, obviously our, our basic service being connecting people, that will continue to be our major area of innovation and connecting people with better quality services, more better value for money, uh, frankly speaking. But as the economy, as society begins to move from a physical contact world to a less lower touch, lower contact um, existence, we will have to come up with applications uh, and with means by which they can be able to easily uh, function uh, in that area. And therefore, we are partnering with different people uh, for these kinds of applications. So watch this space. Well, thank you very much for speaking to us about the exciting world of telecoms and, and the technology connected to it. Thank you very much. Yes, we have been speaking to the executive director and CEO of Telcom Kenya, just giving us insights on the telco space and the exciting technologies that are upcoming. Even during this time of doom and gloom, there is still hope for the future in technology. My name is Alan Oko. Back to you in studio. <laughs>